Hi class, this is Marcos and this is our week four to week five briefing video. And I just wanted to touch base with you guys after our um, last remote session uh, where we had some one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, via Zoom. And thank you all for participating in that and for making it work while I was away. And I'm back in New York now, looking forward to see you all in class on Thursday. And what we need to do in order to be best prepared for that class is uh, to make sure we follow through on what we've been working on and continue our book design development. But just a quick peek here at the schedule for the project. Uh, week three is now in the rear view mirror and we're now um, entering what I'm calling design finalization with uh, design completion and then file finals left. So this is called design finalization in a way to kind of like trick you a little bit to maybe freak you out to think you have to really hurry up and finish the entire book. And that's not meant in a mean way, of course, but it's just meant to um, kind of have a slow ending to the book. So finalizing the design, getting getting your initial layouts and your initial direction um, battened down and, and able to like implement throughout the entire book. Uh, and by the end of this week, when we meet in class uh, as a group to present our designs, it's not that your design should be finalized. It's just that your direction should be finalized and your uh, you have a good batch of work done that shows the book that will then allow you to go into design completion after that and complete your book uh, by getting the rest of the spreads that aren't done done and and getting it all ready to go. And then after that, there's a little bit of a kind of a cushion week there where I'm calling final files and final files are due that week. That week will also be a week where we start our second book project. So there'll be kind of two things going at once. So it's not like it'll just be free and clear to kind of keep working on the book. It's just meant for if you're just not quite done yet by after week five, after uh, that, you there is some time within there if you don't mind working on your baby board book while also working on your new uh, storybook project. Uh, so really the goal then is to try to get as much done as you can get um, for both this week and then finalize it by next week with maybe a few little things uh, on part six. Um, so in terms of like what where you're at, a sort of similar process from what we've been doing. Uh, you've gotten feedback from me and it's kind of just responding to that and continuing what you're working on or, or shifting gears if we talked about shifting gears. Um, and to continue to do that. And if there is any um, doubt or uncertainty, or maybe just if you're even excited, you want to make sure you're on the right track, this is the time now. We don't want to let a whole week go by to be not quite where you want to be or to have something be off track. So I'm asking you, as I have ind individually asked you, to please reach out to me, um, show me your work via email or Slack, demand a video, another one on one session, which I will happily do. Um, because I, I want to make sure you're making good progress this week so that when you present to the class on Thursday, you've got a good portion of your book done and it's um, it's in a in a place where the vision of it is is pretty much set. It's just about implementation for that last uh, week of design completion. Um, so if you could also make sure that you're keeping track of updating your presentation and hosting those presenta presentations to the Google Drive um, and being able to kind of go through your presentation on Thursday this in class and uh, have that full thing ready so that when you start your presentation, you're reminding everybody of what your concept was and kind of whipping through those early pages, but giving everyone a reminder of what your initial concept was, what some of your process was like, and then your, what your layouts are looking like. Uh, so plan for that. And... Um, I've posted basically the instructions for this, which is what I've just out outlined on the Canvas page, um, provided a um, link there to the Google Drive. And um, also um, wanna make sure that everyone's aware of being keeping these Google Drive postings updated. There should be um, a PDF uh, for each of these weeks that shows your progress, that shows your deck being added on each week. That's essential for getting a full good grade. So make sure you're doing that. And here's where you can connect on part four design finalization. And also you should be at this point working on using the template uh, to make your layouts and make sure you're keeping to the eight spreads or 
seven spreads plus the cover and back, which is hidden here by my face. There it is. Um, and uh, that you're utilizing the idea of um, of this bleed. If you're doing a color that goes to the edge or that covers a page or an illustration, even more importantly, that's leaving the page. You have to make sure you have extra that's going to go beyond to this red line uh, so that when they trim the book, there's extra to be trimmed off so that there's not a white mark left because you're right, right at the edge. Also remember that the dirt logo is going to be in the corner on the bottom right, just as it is placed here and on the spine and on the back and on the spine here, part of your design is to have something here to have your, your title of your book and in your name as well. Um, and on the back here, this could be a full image, but there's going to be, oh, oops, I'm clicking out like it's in design. There's going to be a little box around here. That's got a, a little bit of opacity. So you can have an image that, um, that goes behind here is just will be covered with a white box that only shows a little bit of it. But sometimes it's nice to have it continue like that. So make sure you make a, a good use of that. And then don't forget that I that we have these resources. We have a, a big batch of books from past few classes that are um, on the Google Drive. Um, let's see, where are they? They're in, um, here they are. So in, in, in the, um, drive there's a, on the first level there's a class resources folder and then book page through movies and then all the mp4s movies here um, and you know if you're finding yourself stuck or uncertain or just need a little inspiration like take the time to look at these again they're um, they're there for you to to see the past successes uh, and how different um, designers utilize this idea of this book uh, and it might be helpful now, now that you know what you're doing, to even take another look at them. And here's just a little um, quick review of a couple of them. Uh, like, like one thing to keep in mind is is really just let me here we go. It, in, in using this is really to you to understand that this is a, a compact kind of shape, and that because it's a smaller space, that sometimes blowing things up right to like right to or beyond the edges uh, is a smart idea because you are working with a smaller thing that um, can have elements be bigger that sort of contrast the idea of a smaller book with, with a bigger vision for things like your type or your illustration. So I think it's very successful here to have this type not just be kind of placed in there with nice white space, but to instead intrude right off the edges and to um, really kind of take advantage of the smaller book by and making the type be very big and exciting and um, enticing to open. And also the simplicity of this design, utilizing um, just three colors between the black, the darker green and the lighter yellowish green. And also to keep in mind that you do have that ability to kind of like change the color of the paper, so to speak, by having a tinted color. Uh, and it does kind of contrast nicely with the white box that dirt is gonna be in. Um, so that's that's a nice, thing to keep in mind as you develop uh, your layouts. And some people I talked to yesterday was about like, uh, push the scale more, like make things bigger, um, make them more excited and make them more accessible to the viewer, like they're right there in your face. And and here you can see that there's basically like a, just a simple use of like color and illustration style. And the typography is um, bold and fun and kid-like, but still not overly doing it in terms of looking uh, young and, and juvenile. It's, it's, it is. It does have a kind of quirkiness to this typeface, and this is kind of a handwritten thing. So it it is definitely kiddish, but uh, in uh, but kind of in a cool, more contemporary way. Um, and you know, again, using the the light color for the for the background here, and then implying a different surface here with just a simple diagonal line that has a color here. And, and so all this is like constructed in a simple way uh, to make um, for both a clean and exciting visual to look at, but also in terms of execution, it makes for um, something that is not uh, labor intensive or talent, you know, required a, a certain level of, of drawing talent or experience to do it. It can be done by lots of different levels of, of drawing talent. Um, another example here. Now, one thing to talk about here is is this idea of having a border here. And I, I remember having this conversation with this designer and just having concern that if you do put a border around here, you just have to make sure you make it a thick enough border uh, that it doesn't become an issue in terms of like getting too close to the edge. 
I don't really encourage the border idea here, but it does work on this one. But again, they just make sure that it's nice, nice and um, thick so that it doesn't get too close to the edge. Uh, in terms of the design here, again, it's a, a simple idea and a, a little bit of a nice uh, combination between this sort of more sans serif, simple, more sophisticated, or just more like non-kid type, and then using the sort of chalkboardy type that matches the illustration that goes over these simple shapes. I think it's a, a nice balance of uh, of using that sort of kid language while still being kind of sophisticated and sort of um, at a level that's not uh, too like little kid aesthetic. Um, and then another example is uh, this Monster Planet book, which I think um, does a good job of kind of uh, utilizing the space, creating um, some pretty sophisticated drawings, but also having a level of, um, we'll call it white space, even though it's it's light green, um, and making the spreads connect in a nice way where you you feature an image on one side, but then you have an element like this, this bar that sort of has a different angle to it that um, that makes the connection between the two pages and make it one. And I, I really like how there's um, a lot of mess messiness and busyness here, but then it's very clean. And then even here with the with the sort of uh, foliage that sort of is in front of in front of the edge of the camera, so to speak, uh, it's it's very loose and and fun, but doesn't show too much, and it does a good job of kind of like cropping it off and letting letting the mind fill in what that what that is. Um, what else about this book? I think um, I can just stop it here. Whoops. Um, again, like thinking about the spread as a single image versus as being two different pages. And um, and here there's, uh, again, a good use of like typography where there's a one kind of sort of more bigger, bolder level of type that's names the monster. And then there's the type that is um, sort of secondary that is more the, the text that you read after saying the name. And again, the background is simple with a sun element. And, and then there's just this fun kind of implication of waves through this bolder, more organic shape. And of course, the way that uh, she illustrated the, each of these monsters has a, a busyness to it, but in a in a cool way and also in a way that, although it takes a lot of time to do it, is not, um, is not complicated in terms of execution and can be done by any of us. Um, and then on the back, again, remember here, you can see that there, this green background goes all the way to the back and there's that white box right there. And then uh, utilizing the space here by having this last monster sitting on top of the white box. And again, keeping that bar element uh, with that type, uh, bigger type uh, for the onomatopoeia sound. Um, and then this breakfast book, which we looked at a lot of times, does do a job, a good job of like making clear that there's two different pages on each spread by having two different color fields, keeping the typography simple by having a small italic kind of typeface and then the bigger sans serif typeface. And all those typefaces are kind of more on the grown up side because it was kind of meant to attract the, the parent um, by the subject matter and by, and by the um, level of the design, but also of course being interesting to the kid but being a kind of book that you want, uh, you're going to want to pick up if you're a young parent uh, who's sick of looking at uh, marbles and toys and things that are that are just purely kid. And on this one was a nice job on the back page to tell a little. If I can get to it, to tell a little story uh, about what's in the book and to use the elements that are in the book um, as sort of a thing that you say out loud when you get to them. I thought that was a kind of a cool thing. So here's an, an interesting way of utilizing the back in a cool way. All right. So again, you can find those there. Um, but mostly I think now it's really important that each of you uh, be disciplined in your time, be passionate about what you're doing. Like everyone's got a great idea. Everyone has got a book worth putting a lot of heart and effort into because uh, this is something that we're gonna we're gonna have this actual book made. You're gonna have it in your hand, and it's not gonna it's not gonna fall apart, you know, in five years, in ten years, in twenty years, and in, in forty years, it's gonna be around. And and um, I want you to 
put your best into this because um, this is a, a you know a rare chance to make something that's going to be long lasting. And um, so have that drive, have that discipline, spend the time, you know, manage your time well, don't go crazy and stay up all night for three nights in a row. Um, but at the same time, do push, push harder, go beyond, go beyond your comfort zone. Comfort is the enemy sometimes. So don't be fooled by always having to be comforted, like try to push yourself uh, and make this as, as good as you can. Don't be satisfied with the first thing. Be critical, self-critical of what you're working on. Share, get examples or get feedback from other people. But then, of course, take to heart what you feel. And of course, listen to me um, and really work to craft this into being um, a beautiful and brilliant book. Uh, think about like the way the book works. If you're reading out loud, like maybe start reading out loud as you're going through your pages on your computer to try to imagine that experience. So think of your book in not just in, in 3D, but in 4D with time. Think about like how somebody will page through what they will say, how the experience will work so that you like take in, keep in mind that full experience of what the book will do. Um, and again, share with me as needed, reach out and I will do my best to uh, give you support, advice, encouragement as much as needed. Um, and we'll get this done in a great way. So Looking forward to seeing everybody back in class on Friday. We'll have a full class Friday, everyone meeting at the same time, and I will see you guys then.